Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Battle Bosses. Battle Bosses is for two to four players, takes about a half an hour to 45 minutes to play the game, and is for ages 12 and up. In the game Battle Bosses, you're going to be choosing to play as a boss. Maybe you'll choose as you, the Dragon Lady, or even maybe Cthulhu, the Lord of the Deep. Uh, and there's, of course, more than just that. But what I have to show you is those two. And then you're, of course, beginning a deck of cards and some dice and their minions. Cthulhu is going to get Get zombies and then uh, you over here is gonna get these samurai as well as their battle boards here which are gonna let you know uh, what you can do with the resources you're gonna be spending while rolling dice in the game you're going to be able to have a hand of cards you're going to be using those cards based on the die you roll and with the die you roll it's based on what you're gonna be getting you're gonna get these swirly little energies here or you'll be using these red crystals here uh, and the crystals gonna be for your cards the energy is gonna be for your uh, battle boards that have things like movement as well as special abilities you're gonna be moving around these uh, tiles and attacking each other. Your objective is to defeat your opponent's boss while using your minions, your card abilities, and of course your big boss himself. At the end of a turn, if you've got your boss on another boss's space, you can do damage to them, and each boss has a certain amount of health that will be kept track of on the board with these health markers here. You're going to be doing that uh, uh, continuously throughout the game. You can play with multiple players or teams of players if you want as well, and the person who's left standing with their boss alive is the winner. Okay, let me go show the game. Here are some of the components for the game Battle Boss. And as you can see, I have two bosses here to show you. I have the Cthulhu deck, and then I have the Dew deck. Dew is the dragon, Cthulhu is the lord of the deep. Uh, each player is going to get their own battle boss, whether it be a miniature or a standee, based on the Kickstarter, I'm not too sure. You're also going to be getting zombies for Cthulhu, a samurai for Dew, as well as these Bushido tokens you can use with the samurai. Each player is going to get four of these dice here to start the game off with, and of course two bonus die where they can actually get to a uh, roll, uh, provided they have the cards to do so. These, of course, you have your energy and your crystals, you'll be using throughout the game. On your boards over here it shows you the energy you can use and what they do, basically creating, uh, spawning different things and moving things as well as your special ultimate ability. And uh, you're going to be getting these tiles for each of the bosses as well. They basically have a front and a back, but it doesn't really matter. They're just mainly used to create a board. This is the board here and you have the units that spawn here and here, and that's pretty much what you're going to be getting for the game. Alright, let me tell you how to play it. So to begin the game battle bosses, you're going to simply choose a boss. I here have Ryu along with his samurai, so I will be using this character to show you how it functions. The game you're going to randomly choose who goes first, and the person who goes first is going to roll three die. From then on out, everyone will be rolling four die at the beginning of their turn. Take your three dice at the beginning, roll them, and see what you get. Based on what you get is what you're going to be taking from the pool, either these little circles here or these crystals here. Circles are for abilities, crystals are for cards. You're also going to have five cards in your hand you will take from the deck, and you can utilize them by paying the cost on the top left corner. Their abilities are going to be either effects or upgrades and you'll be uh, putting them down either continuous effects or you're going to be using them instantaneously they do different things depending on the characters after you've done that you'll then be uh, utilizing them moving your characters around the board and fighting your characters each have 15 health the main bosses and all of the basic minions are going to have one health at which they all have their own unique abilities you're going to use as much of the resources you've gained as possible and remember there's also a nice little explosion here that can happen where you're going to be able to roll more dice so exploding dice do occur and uh, moving them around the board whenever a unit hits another unit or lands on top of another unit uh, it does one damage to, uh, to that unit and of course they will die and if you have your boss that rolls in on top of a unit uh, that unit will do a damage to the boss and the boss will do damage to that uh, if a boss ever lands on a boss's space that at the end of a turn the boss will do its damage to that boss and the other boss that is not its turn will not do any damage to that boss and then after that the next player is gonna get dealt they'll get to roll their dice here uh, and continue the game they're going to be moving around this gridded board and depending on how you set it up will be how it functions as well as with multiple players that will change and multiple bosses. Whenever a boss has been defeated that's when the game's over. Pretty simple. Let me show you how it's played. Now we're back to the game battle bosses and it's all set up. We have Cthulhu over here along with all the stuff that he's going to get and you over here with all the stuff he's going to get. Make sure your deck is thoroughly shuffled and take five cards for each player along with one board for the boss and one board for the minions. You're then also going to take your four dice you'll be using throughout the game and two potential bonus dice you'll be using for each and every boss and of course the tokens you is going to get samurais and bushido tokens and cthulhu will get zombies randomly select who's going to go first and make sure you have two piles here for the resources you're going to gain we'll say that you is going to go first we'll take these two, three dice here and you're going to go ahead and roll them after you roll you're going to collect the resources based on what you rolled so right here you see there's five little these swirls of power so we're going to take five of these guys here and we're also going to take one of these crystals 
then that is your pool to use this turn. Remember that crystals are going to go on to the next round and these circles are going to be removed so you have to use them this turn or you burn them. Look at the cards in your hand and see what you can do. Now right now of course it tells you that this is a 2, this is a 4, here's a 1, a 2, and a 0. So uh, you're going to want to uh, use these ones here or save your uh, crystals for later. This is an upgrade which says if you spend, uh, for, for 0 um, of these guys here you can then spend one of these resources here and it'll let you move a samurai one space. So I'm actually going to go ahead and play this as an upgrade, just put it somewhere so that you can see. And that was for zero, but if I want, I can spend one of these guys here to move a samurai. But I don't have any samurai yet. This one over here is another upgrade, and it says whenever you move multiple samurai from, uh, uh, from the same location, you can actually move them to different adjacent spaces. Because when you move samurai in one location, you move them all to the next location. With this card here specifically, it lets you move them all from here to any of the adjacent locations based on the number of samurai you have. I'm going to save this crystal here and just set these cards aside and look at these boards here. These boards are going to be what we utilize these things for here. Uh, right now you can see that it says you can spend one of these guys here to move your boss or you can use three of them to discard a card from your hand and place a Bushido token on a samurai. There's no samurai right now but if you can see over here it says if you spend two you can create a samurai. So I'll go ahead and spend two and create a samurai. When you create a samurai you have to put it on the space of your boss and then for this it says one of these guys here move any number of samurai in one space to an adjacent space. So I'm going to spend two more to create one more samurai and then I'm going to go ahead and spend one to move all samurai on one space to an adjacent space. So they're all going to go over here. Um, of course if you wanted you could spend uh, three discard a card and put a Bushido token on one of them. Bushido tokens are going to be uh, uh, basically one life extra. Normally these guys all have one health but if you put a Bushido token on these guys it's going to give them one additional one. I've got no more resources to use except for this crystal here so I'm just going to go ahead and end my turn and let the next player go. Now that is the first turn is over every player is going to be rolling four dice. So Cthulhu is going to go ahead and take all of his dice and roll. So we're going to re-roll that one there. And he's got two, four, and six of these guys here. So a little bit better roll. Four, five, and six. And then of course he's got his one crystal as well. And he's got his cards in hand. Like this one here is a zap for zero. It destroys a minion. So he'll go ahead and do that. That's a nice card to use. Destroying one of these samurai. Uh, he's got five to destroy an upgrade card that's on the field, uh, two to make a zombie in Cthulhu, make two zombies in Cthulhu's space. He can't do that, he only has one, and he has two more of these cards, which cost three and two, so he can't use these at all right now, unfortunately. These guys basically go in the discard pile. Um, but he also has these. Now, it's basically the same thing for each boss. P spend two to uh, discard a card to draw a card, and uh, spend one to move Cthulhu a space. And of course, they each have ultimate abilities as well. The zombies, you can spend two to make a zombie, and spend one to move zombies. So he'll go ahead and spend two to make a zombie on his space. He'll spend another two to make another zombie on his space. And then he's got another two for yet another zombie on his space. All he's got left is this one here, so he's going to go ahead and end his turn. Now, remember, whenever you end your turn, make sure you draw up to five cards again. So I forgot there, but yeah, you're always going to be drawing an extra. You're always going to be drawing your hand up to five at the end of your turn. Okay, back to Dew's turn here again. We're going to go ahead and roll. Oh, this is a nice one. So we get one, two, three, four, five of these guys here. One, two, three, four, five. And then we get to re-roll all the exploded dice here. These ones have little exploded symbols. We'll take these and re-roll them again. That is going to give us two, three, four more of these. One, two, uh, three, and four. One more crystal. And then this die exploded yet again. Oh, bam, another one and another explosion. And then to end it all off, one more of these and this here. So that would be our roll. Pretty, pretty powerful indeed. We got an amazing roll this time around. So now we're going to go ahead and look at our hand. Do we see if we want to play any of these cards here? Now we have three crystals to utilize. And uh, we've got a, whenever a samurai you control deals damage to a boss or destroys a minion this turn, heal one damage from your boss. That's pretty useful. An upgrade that says whenever you make a samurai in his space, you may make it in an adjacent space. We're going to use that for sure. So we're going to play that right there for two. Now, instead of putting guys here, we can actually put them in adjacent spaces, which is really important for this deck because we want them to be spread out if possible. We'll save the rest of these for later, but now we've got a ton of these things to utilize. So we're going to make one, two, and three three samurais and because of this ability here we can go ahead and put them adjacently if we'd like and then we have still all of this left over one two three four and five uh, we can go ahead and choose to discard to place a bushido token on a samurai so if i wanted to i could spend three of these guys here discard a card that we probably don't want to use maybe we don't want to use this guy here and then that is going to give us a bushido token on one of the samurai and uh 
what else? We got two more left to use. We'll spend two to create yet another samurai. A lot of samurai there. Very, very strong. Uh, and now we've got pretty good board presence here, but we're done. We've got nothing else to utilize. So it's the next player's turn again, and they're simply going to roll. Um, oh yeah, this guy's gonna get his cards up to five again. And uh, who has, what was his roll right here? I think this is his roll. Uh, one, two, three, four, four and two. One, two, three, and four, and uh, two. These two are exploding dice, we'll roll them again. Two more, and one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. And uh, we got four of these to use. So we go ahead and look at our hand once more. What do we want to do? Let's go ahead and make zombies. So for two here, we can make two zombies on our space. And uh, then we can choose to save these for later. And then we'll take these guys. Let's make a... Let's show you how fighting works, okay? So we've got all these zombies running through the space. We'll spend one, move all these zombies to an adjacent space. Spend another one, make all these zombies go to another space. Another will go here. And then we'll go ahead and spend one more to make them all go here again. This will destroy the samurai along with a zombie here. And then, of course, we can choose to continue moving them for another one. And then we will move these guys over here. The Bushido token will destroy a zombie. And then uh, the zombie will destroy the samurai. So now he's out of options. So because he's out of options, he's going to go ahead and end his turn. Remember, he's going to draw back up to five cards once again. And it'll be this player's turn to go. Uh, it's, like, it's like I said, it's just a back and forth thing going on. If this player were to roll his dice and have his uh, currency and he'd utilize it to move this guy here, the end of his turn, he would defeat a zombie and the zombie would, uh, would end up doing damage to him. Or actually, when he moves here, he's actually going to take two damage and both of these zombies will go. Whenever bosses take damage, you're going to take them from the pool over here and put them on your boss's agent. HP, it'll go from 15 to 13. So that is the way you would kill this guy. There's also a bunch of cards in the deck that are going to be useful to do that. Uh, your effects cost one less, destroy and upgrade, destroy enemies. Uh, this one over here, his ultimate ability says you can search your deck or, or discard pile for an effect and play it for free. That costs seven, of course. And the Bushido one, the, the ultimate do, says if you spend seven, you can do one damage to a boss for each samurai in a space you control. So right now that'd be two damage to this guy, but the turn before it could have been four which is pretty good amount of damage right and eventually one of these bosses will die and when that happens the game is going to be over if you play with multiple players you simply add more bosses and more tiles to the board and fight like that the last boss or team's boss uh, surviving is going to be the winner all right let me tell you about the game what i think about it so the game Battle Bosses is a strategic cutthroat game of dice rolling and tactics. You're going to be taking these dice and hoping you're going to be getting at least seven for those ultimate abilities or for the explosions because those are so powerful as you saw down below. Each character, such as the Dragon or Cthulhu, are going to have their own unique set of skills. For instance, you here is very, very good at creating samurais and customizing them. The samurais using the Bushido tokens as well as controlling space around them are going to make the samurai more powerful along with the boss himself. If you can secure a large location of, uh, of characters, a lot of different spaces, you can be able to do more damage to Cthulhu. Cthulhu, on the other hand, is very, very good at creating zombies from nothing. He also has a bunch of different effects that are going to be put on the board here that will create zombies just from him playing additional cards. You've got stuff like Dawn of the Dead for seven, he can create five zombies. Or Forbidden Tomb, where you can play, whenever you play an effect, make a zombie in Cthulhu's space. Ancient Power, as long as you have seven or more cards in your discard pile, you can roll in additional die. So things that involve the grave is going to be very important for Cthulhu. Look at Dew here on the other hand. We're going to be, so let's see the big stuff he's got. He's got stuff like a sacred Bushido. Whenever you uh, place a samurai down for your first samurai, you get a free Bushido token on him. Or something like Mist Calvary. At the beginning of your turn, after you roll die, you can move a samurai for every single time you roll a crystal. And then there's Kensai. As long as you have three or more promotions, roll an additional die as well. Useful stuff, and usually involves increasing the power of the samurai along with area control. Now that being said, there is multiple different bosses that I haven't played with. These are the two I have played with. Uh, but what I have here in the game is excellent. This game is so much fun. It is very, very, very simple to teach has a feel of King of Tokyo, even though it's not really related. And the feel is basically the fun of it, the simplicity of it, and yet the tactical nature involved. Choosing between whether you want to use the cards or the abilities on your on your boards here. And there's not a whole bunch, but there is enough to where, where you're really going to whet your appetite and enjoy this game. The artwork is great, and the tile placement is fun. Creating your own different boards is excellent. Um, a couple things to note is, one, the, 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 the 
tiles don't necessarily do anything, which I think would be kind of cool if they did. Maybe different tiles for different characters had some kind of special effect. And uh, the fact that all the bosses are unique is really, really cool. I like the fact that the crystals stay afterward and you're going to continually get more cards in your hand. You can discard cards to get special abilities, but really discarding cards is also going to let you to draw new cards. So the cards you don't want, you can get rid of for a reason and then draw additional cards that are better for you in that specific situation. All the cards have purpose and place. And Cthulhu has its own unique aspects that are super cool. I love the zombies feel, the feel, the theme comes through with each, with each of these characters. I really want to see the rest of the bot battle bosses because they're really, really fun. This game shows a lot of love and care in it, and you can just totally tell as you're playing the game how fun and quick it is that you're going to want to play more than one game. We sat down the first time we played, we played four games along with another reviewer who came over and played the game, and he also thought the game was good. So that being said, battle bosses excellent game. This is definitely a game you're going to enjoy if you like rolling the dice with a little bit of luck, of course, and then choosing between the two tactics, cards or boss boards, and then what boss you play is important, and how you make the map or how many players. With more players comes craziness, which is really fun as well. It's something that is probably really easy to introduce into this game, and I haven't played it with the multiple players, but you can just when you play this game, you'll be like, oh yeah, it definitely would be super fun with more players. It would increase the amount of craziness, though. Like I said, though, overall, this is a game you should definitely check out. I'm going to give this my seal of approval for how much I enjoyed this game along with everybody else. Definitely check out Battle Bosses in the description below if it even somewhat interests you. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it. As well as checking out Battle Bosses. It should be on Kickstarter very soon if it's not already in the description below. It's a fun, fun little crazy game. Not only that, but go ahead and check out my website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, and Kickstarter lists as well. And my friend, uh, the Giveaway Geek, currently giving away a bunch of stuff, including the Nintendo Switch on his website. It's definitely something you should try and win, because then you can play with me! Alright guys, that's all I got for this time, and as always, I look forward to seeing you next time on the Battle Boss Field.